So I, I wanted to talk about this. I, I had addressed this very, very early on in the pandemic. Um, within the first month of the pandemic, we had seen that the courts had to close and the, the DOJ was basically saying, hey, we're not conducting trials. None of the courts are going to conduct trials. Uh, even virtually, you know, they were like not particularly interested in conducting any trials. Uh, so uh, they shut down. And and I talked about how that kind of left a whole bunch of people in limbo, right? The, the folks that are in jail and they have to spend a, a several days or weeks or what have you in jail because they haven't made bail money or they haven't agreed to a plea deal or anything like that. Um, so that has kind of gotten worse. And it's a, again, it leads back to a systemic problem. And the problem is within the system itself. So before the pandemic, this is uh, all of this information that we're now going to talk about is pre pandemic. This is pre March, 2020. This was sort of the way that the justice system worked. 94%, 94% uh, of people, would uh, plead guilty. They would take the, the the plea deal that the prosecutors would offer. Uh, and in most of those cases, you're not looking at a, a, something that goes into a trial in front of a jury. It uh, Even if the person is innocent in what they're doing, 94% of, uh, of cases were pled out and they were pled guilty. That's 6% of the cases that did plead out that said, no and pushed it to a trial and even then i i would i would wager to bet that uh if i was a betting man i would wager to bet that even then for the six percent that do claim that they're not guilty because they very well might be because in a lot of these circumstances these are innocent people who are caught in the justice system and they say well you know, if we go to trial, there's all of this stuff and it's going to be forever. So it's it's a time it's a time consuming things. Uh, Misty Winston mentions mentioned this when we were talking about Daniel Hale. The process is the punishment. The process is the punishment. And that's what they're doing. The legal system is not set up to work, to uphold the law. It is not set up to 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 to, you know, help the people get justice. That's not what the legal system does. The legal system is there to make a bunch of money and funnel people into the prison industrial complex. And when they take a plea deal, yeah, you know, if it's, uh, let's say it's a robbery case, right? Somebody robbed a convenience store and they think it's it's Joe Schmo from down the street. They have uh, evidence that maybe it, it, it was it was Joe Schmo. You know, uh, he, 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 he quote, fits the description, right? How many times have we heard that when, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to black people in this country, right? They quote, fit the description. So they fit the description, they arrest him based on the fact that, you know, it's, it's like the pseudoscience bullshit, uh, like how they, it, well, one of the, one of the big things was, was teeth marks, like teeth marks are not actually accurate evidence. It's, it's like pseudoscience stuff that the criminal justice system uses to put people in prison. Um, I believe Jonathan O'Donnell did a segment on this uh, uh, on Redacted Tonight a few years ago. But um, but yeah, so, you know, they, they use these pseudoscience things. They put you in jail and they give you a bail that's unaffordable, right? Oh, it's $10,000 bail. Uh, and we're going to keep you in, in, in jail until you can talk to a lawyer and maybe the state will offer you some kind of plea deal. So let's say... Uh, and and I'm I'm kind of throwing numbers out here. I'm 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 I don't know what the actual thing for a robbery case is, right? But let's say if it goes to trial uh, and they do find you guilty, this is something else that they do. Is um, what is it called? It's called trial penalty. I'll I'll talk about that a little bit more. There's a, the, it'll it'll end up becoming a trial penalty, and they'll give you a little bit of a harsher sentence in that case, right? So let's say you you're you're going to get ten years for this robbery if you, if it goes to trial, but if you take this plea deal and say that you're guilty, we'll knock that down to three, um, and then we'll do you know we'll do pr uh, good behavior. You can do some community service to knock those sentences back a little bit. But now you still have a, a guilty charge on your record, even though you're you're innocent. And they don't really do the investigation because, quote, they don't have the funds to do it. Some of these cities 
the police departments, the law enforcement, just the law enforcement, for example, New York City gets $6 billion. With that $6 billion, they are, they're really telling me $6 billion means that they don't have the resources available to look into a robbery case and actually do the work. They're telling me $6 billion can't afford people to actually do the work that cops and the legal system is supposed to do, which is investigate to figure out who actually did the crime. And not only that, you know, so this person is claiming that they're innocent and now the actual robber is still out there, probably going to commit another crime. So now the, the criminal justice system is built so that actual criminals can get away with it and people that, quote, fit the description or, or meet some other pseudoscience bullshit get away with it. So how is that the justice system? How is that justice for anything? It's not, right? It's, it's, it's not justice for anything at all. Since 1989, this was something that uh, I, this article was found on Consor Consortium News. Uh, since 1989, at least at minimum 580 cases have had to be reevaluated and exonerated. 580 cases? That's fucking crazy. How many of those people spent years in prison? How many of those people, when they got out, couldn't get a job? Couldn't live in an apartment because they had a criminal record? For no reason. You know, they did this to John Kiriakou, too, who was a CIA whistleblower. And they gave him a plea deal and he had to go to prison. And and now he has that on his record. They, they haven't expunged that. How many of those people are there that served their time for a crime they didn't commit? Amy Klobuchar. Amy Klobuchar did this to a child. To I think it was like a 12 or 13 year old kid. What did she use? She used uh, paid informants. She said, if if somebody comes out with information about this crime, uh, the police department uh, and 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 the um, uh, attorney general's office will uh, will give you guys a bunch of money. That always leads to problems because it always leads to people that want to come out and just make some shit up. So you can't trust it. You put a financial incentive for information in a financially troubled community. So you know a bunch of people are going to be like, yeah, I, this guy, I don't like this guy. And I knew there was something about him I don't like. And I think he did it. Or are you basing that off of, nope, I have, I don't know. I, I don't like him. So probably, right? You should, th that's a waste of time. And then with that case too, I talked about this like two years ago, but it still it still you know rings true. Is Amy Klobuchar put an innocent black kid in prison for the rest of his life and and basically ruined this kid's life, um, and has never fucking addressed it since, right? And at that same time, she was also helping Derek Chauvin uh, continue to commit assault and murder people uh, while he was a police officer. So she's basically also partly responsible for George Floyd's death. Anyway. Um, the person that did it actually came out and confessed. And they were like, that's nice, but we already got a guy and we're not going to change our mind about it because it's going to waste our time. And re uh, but really, it's you don't want to look like a fucking moron, which you kind of are. And it might not be because it might not be you, you might not be a moron because you're stupid. You're a moron because you don't want to do the work to fucking actually catch the bad guy because you're not doing that so why do they offer these plea deals right that's a big question that i think everybody wants everybody wants to know why are they offering these plea deals because america lacks attorneys judges courtrooms to try every single criminal case that comes through the through the through the thing so because they're and and why and why would you right why why would you let let's say you're a law student you go through why why are you a law student well I I believe in justice and and I believe that you know um, innocent people should be free and I believe that guilty people should be in prison I, I I I believe in the rule of law and so on and so forth let's say that's that's your that's your belief that's your ideology that's what you want to do and you go to law school and you start learning about all this stuff. And you learn that this is what the prosecution does. And this is what how the system operates. 
are you going to want to continue to be a part of that system? No, you're probably going to get discouraged and you're probably going to get the fuck out of it. So, you know, again, but people will look at it and go, ah, nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody wants to do the dirty work. You think it's all fun? No, nobody wants to be a person that is responsible, either a prosecutor or a defendant, and participate in a system that is going to put innocent people behind bars for no fucking reason. And they made an ethical choice not to be a part of that system, and they should not be punished for making ethical choices. Just like whistleblowers shouldn't be punished for making a moral ethical decision. But again, all of that goes into how broken and corrupt. The, uh, and again, this is a reminder, this is all pre-pandemic shit. So, uh, you know, uh, really, uh, this goes into the, this goes, it, it's not, it's not a, oh, people don't want to work. It's a, people don't want to take part in a system that is so corrupt and broken that just funnels people into the prison industrial complex. Thank you, Joe Biden. So like I mentioned, this all leads to dramatically lowered sentences. Um, and one of the other things that they do is, uh, you know, they'll keep these people in jail. And they'll say, well, if you don't take the plea deal, then we're going to have to keep you in jail. So getting out of jail in and of itself might be part of that plea deal. And what are they, you know, and and a lot of these, a lot of these times, they're probably in jail uh, because they didn't do anything because it was convenient because they fit some pseudoscience bullshit because they quote fit the description right they're not in jail for anything. So now, post pandemic, like I mentioned, the uh, court shut down, J jury cases were all on hold. They weren't. They weren't. Um, you know, looking at juried cases all that much. And, you know, a lot of people, and, th and this is this is something that, uh, my, my belief on capitalism is that it's a very opportunistic system uh, that looks for certain things. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 in, in certain cases, it's highly opportunistic. In a lot of other cases, it's it, it manufactures problems so that it can pretend to solve them. Uh, and, and really, it's just and en manufacturing problems to enrich itself off of those things. So those are the two ways that I see capitalism operating quite often. And, and in this circumstance, this was a uh, opportunistic moment. Uh, people were afraid. People didn't want to go to prison, right? Uh, and and at that and and during the pandemic, uh, the pr pr prisons were uh, a place where people were really concerned about spread. You're, you weren't really getting uh, PPEs or any sort of cleaning uh, done in these places because, again, we don't consider prisoners to be human beings in a capitalist society, which is bullshit, which is, which is by design because they want these people to commit crimes again and go back to prison because that's how the prison industrial complex works and makes money off of prisoners. You know, slave labor. Anyway, uh, so these people were afraid, so the prosecutors would offer them a plea deal. And now they were offering them better plea deals than they would before. So instead of saying, hey, you know, if you take this to trial, you might go to jail for 10, you might go to prison for 10 years. But if you don't go to trial, we'll, we'll you know, do three plus community service and good behavior and blah, blah, blah. Instead of that, they might say, hey, so we can't really send you to prison, but we can do house arrest. How about, you know, X amount of time for house arrest? Uh, and then you have to do community service and you have to go through X, Y, Z. So they were giving more lenient sentences. But again, if you are not guilty, if you didn't commit the crime, then why would you need to go to prison? And, and you're ruining somebody's record because, like I said, prisoners have a hard time getting work. Not only that, but once you go to prison, even, uh, you know, even when you have this criminal record, uh, even if you're uh, uh, reformed and, and you know, it, you, you don't want to commit these crimes anymore and you don't have these urges to do whatever it is they claim that you did. You can't vote. Getting a job is harder. Getting a loan is harder. Getting a, a nice place to live is harder. Society looks down on you. You ruin somebody's life. Just like Amy Klobuchar ruined that kid's life. You think that kid is going to get a, be able to get a decent job, go to college,
get an education, get his get his childhood back. You think that kid's going to get his fucking childhood back? No. And what these people do by pushing and forcing plea deals uh, onto these people because, oh, my God, the legal system is so overloaded. Well, that's also uh, a consequence of the fact that there are dumb fucking laws. There are stupid fucking laws that these, you know, roided out cops are trying to enforce. Let's talk about the people that should be in prison. Are the bankers that caused the 08 collapse in prison? No, they got bailed out. They got positive reinforcement for wrecking the economy. Because that's good for capitalism. Because capitalism operates in booms and busts. Killer cops. There's like one. There's probably more than one, but it's not a high number. I would I would say I don't I don't even think it goes into the double digits. But most of them get away. They murdered somebody in cold blood. And they got away with it. They don't get plea deals. They just get away with it. So, you know, the concern now is as we're returning back to the courts, as jury trials are coming, you know, the or rather the ability for jury trials are are coming back. Um, people are concerned that these plea deals are going to come back in a higher rate because they don't want they don't want to, quote, bog down the court system. To me, it's. We need a complete transformation of what the justice system is. There are too many dumb laws in place that, and, and too many economic uh, laws in place that screw over poor people and put them in this precarious position. I, I would, I, I, you know, and this might be something that I, 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 I would definitely have to look into and research is uh, people always talk about voter turnout. Right. They always talk about voter turnout. I wonder how much of that is influenced by people going to prison or having some kind of criminal record that makes them in, ineligible to vote. Hence, affecting voter turnout. I wonder how much of that. I bet I bet it's a pretty significant number based on how large the prison industrial complex is. All these people are doing is fucking ruining people's lives and a lot of them are innocent 508 580 cases had to be exonerated since 1989 that's too many too many it's way too many i don't give a shit you want to throw statistics in the i don't fucking care too many innocent people went to prison and had to be exonerated and and that's not all of them 580 are just the ones that they caught since 1989. There's still probably tons of them. Let's look at your comments. Holly. Holly says, uh, trial takes time and money. Expert testimony. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, right. But that's also the job of the justice system. So perhaps if... I, I, I look at it as... Yes, trials take time and money, but isn't like shouldn't shouldn't we take the time and the money to try to make sure that we're not putting the wrong person in prison? Try to do some investigation, right? Like everybody's obsessed with crime dramas and crime podcasts. So why are they not obsessed with the fact that the justice system doesn't do what any of those crime shows and podcasts say they do? Oh, case in point, the Central Park Five, yeah. Yeah, the Central Park Five. That's another that's another one. Innocent kids went to prison for absolutely no reason and got their fucking lives ruined. People that are indebted yeah, Holly points out the indebted from traffic fines and such. Yep, they 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 get their uh um they get screwed over. That's an economic punishment. Why why are we being punished for economics? Debtors prisons are illegal in America. Wouldn't this count as a debtors prison? We have these laws, right? 
a lot of people are like, oh, well, we have these antitrust laws. So, you know, we have these kinds of laws to protect people. Yeah, but they're not being enforced. They're not being enforced at all. So how are, how are we supposed to say that justice is actually being served? Because it's not. I want to acknowledge this comment right here. Fuck yeah for Lori Crete and Tornado Bait. Uh, indeed, Aiden, I agree with that. That's I, I just wanted to throw that at the very end there. Um, <laughs> because uh, I agree. Lori, Lori Creek and Tornado Bait, super fucking fun bands. And I'm very excited to come down to Norfolk in November. Uh, and once those tickets are, are, are available, I'll, I'll, I'll blast that out everywhere. You, you, you know that. You know I'll, I'll be talking about it nonstop. Uh, okay. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out. And please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that. Please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often, uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before. But I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates all over the place, so uh, and I'm very, very excited that these live events are coming back. But I'm also going to be doing virtual shows. Uh, they're going to be less frequent, but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well. So don't worry. We're going to be doing some virtual shows coming up. Uh, I'm also going to be putting out new Forkful of Noodles content as well. Uh, so don't worry, those those things are not going away uh, just because the, 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 the live touring is is back. Uh, but again, you can go get all that de uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can check out all my stand-up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events. Uh, you know, when, when I come through your town. So uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time.